Good evening. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, Deep Java Library and uh, how to use Deep Java Library build and deploy AI applications in Java. Uh, so Deep Java Library uh, is an open source project developed by AWS. Uh, this, okay. So, uh, why using DJL for the? Uh, there is a wait a minute. Oh, there's one. So let me talk about the 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 who is the audience of the DJL. So, uh, DJL is designed for the Java developer. So, uh, any Java developer doesn't have. You don't need to be uh, have any deep learning experience. So you can just start using DJL. Uh, so uh, in order to achieve that, uh, we, we build something like make it easy for Java user, uh, the ramp up. So first thing we did is we, we have a built-in model zoo. So the model zoo is a pre-trained model that you can use it out of box. So you can, achieve, using the, the building digital model zoo, you can achieve, uh, for example, like object detection, image classification, uh, the, the question and answer, we have uh, like uh, more than 70 uh, pre-built models and you can directly use uh, to build your own use case. And the second thing is uh, uh, most of the, uh, the, the, in, in the, the Java developer uh, is not going to build the model from the scratch. Instead, you're, using, you're going to use the, the, uh, the, uh, the state of the art model and uh, apply the data you want to train and uh, uh, to, to become your own model. So we particularly make it easy for this kind of the, 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 the training, we call it the transfer learning. So we build around like a, the, the, the mechanism allow you to easily train your model using existing models. And uh, we also have a DJL zero, which is we are currently working on with this, uh, if you are using the DJL zero, uh, we can, the only thing you need to tell is, uh, I have, uh, uh, the, this is a data set. This is a problem, uh, which is a, this application I want to solve. And then DJL will, sell, will, will, will automatically pick the model and choose the right one and do the training for you automatically. Uh, so the, the zero means uh, zero deep learning knowledge. So we are trying to achieve that you can train a model with zero deep learning knowledge. And uh, finally, we have a DGL ser serving. So it's a model serving infrastructure. So once you have a model, you want to productionize it and put on the, the, the in service. So we have a DGL serving, which allow you to just using a command line to deploy your model. So you don't even need to write a line of code deployed model. So those stuff is the effort we did in DJL to allow users like without uh, much deep learning experience to onboard with AI. Uh, DJL is not only for that. DJL can also be used for like uh, the uh, developers already uh, using deep learning. Uh, so uh, for those uh, users like already trained uh, the, the expert in the machine learning, if you want to deploy your model and you want flexibility, DGL is your friend. And for those DevOps, uh, so we deliberately make it very, very easy to deploy machine learning solutions. And you can see in uh, my later slide, and we provide a different uh, layer of the solutions to make deployment very, very easy. Uh, why using DGL for machine learning? So right now, currently, the deep learning and machine learning world are dominant by Python. So most of the models, papers, are all in Python. Uh, but the when when it become the productionized, right in the in the enterprise, so it become difficult. Uh, most of the enterprise customer using uh, the, the have a Java developers and uh, using heavily using. Java applications in their uh, in their stacks, so integration with Python is uh, not ideal for those uh, enterprise users. 
Uh, and many of the, data, the big data applications like Spark, Kafka, uh, Flink, and Apache Bean, and, uh, and, uh, and the many of the other like uh, Java Scala-based applications, uh, it's hard to integrate with Python. So uh, there's a gap. So the, today, if you wanted the, the running the, the, the um, a batch inference using the Spark, you don't have much uh, the options uh, in the deep learning. Uh, so either using the PySpark or those framework, it's it, they, they, they causing a lot of like turns. Uh, and, the, and the DJL, uh, because it's a, a JVM language, right? Using DJL can reduce the communications overhead uh, between Java and, 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 and the Python. So, and the DGL support the multi-threading. The most of the, the, the Python code doesn't support the, like, the multi-threading. They're using the multi-processing instead. So using DGL to integrate with those data, big data applications uh, can be much, much more efficient and reduce the latency. Uh, and uh, Android application right now, it's, there's a lot of like Android applications and, uh, and the mobile uh, use cases. Uh, DJL is it's, uh, a Java language. So it's naturally we support the Android applications. So this creates a huge uh, the opportunities for the Android users can use deep learnings on the phone. Uh, and the, another benefit of the DJL is uh, DJL is a frame, framework agnostic. DJL can load all kinds of different models from using different uh, framework. Uh, originally, if you want to switch the, the framework, it's going to be uh, very hard because pretty much you need to rewrite all the code you have. But using DJL, we standardize them and you have the same code can run on the different framework. Uh, migration from one framework to another one become like a very, very simple. Uh, DJL is not pure, not just for deployment. DGL support like uh, the, the, the training uh, functionality. And furthermore, we have uh, NumPy like uh, the uh, uh, multi-dimensional libraries. Those, those, those libraries allow you to do uh, the, 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 the multi-dimensionally uh, array calculations uh, and leverage the uh, hardware accelerations. So uh, itself, like using the NumPy, like NDRA operation itself, it's very, very uh, powerful. Uh, you can do a lot of other stuff, not limited to you uh, just in the, the deep learning area. Uh, and it's very easy to use. So we emphasize the ease of use. Uh, so you can see, I will show you later that deploy a model and you only need three lines of code to run a inference code. So as I mentioned earlier, like DGL is a machine learning work framework in Java. So we designed for Java and uh, the, 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 we use the design pattern and the syntax conventions uh, like Java user are familiar with. Uh, I mentioned like the early, earlier that NumPy like operators, we support like a, more than uh, 60 uh, mass operations uh, in, in, in the n-dimensional array. You can find the, the detailed document in our Java doc, uh, the, 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 the website. Uh, DJL can load models trained from the Python. Uh, we support uh, the models from uh, Apache MXNet, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Onyx Runtime, uh, the, uh, TF Lite and even uh, Paddle Paddle. So we support a lot of engines. And uh, if you train the models and you have existing models you want to deploy in Java, right? You can use DJL, it's very, very easy. And, uh, and we tested, we guarantee the model, the run result is the same as the, the Python code. And when you switching engine, for example, if you have a better model you want to upgrade, Using DJL, you just uh, you you just change the configurations. You don't really need to change the code because we we using the same set of code to run all the engines. Yeah, 
uh, DGL provide uh, the pre-trained model out of, out of box. And uh, we have some, uh, the, the customers uh, using those pre-trained models to, to build their own uh, use case. And, uh, and they have, a, uh, yeah, those models can be used directly for production. And the DGL is a service ready. So we have, uh, we have the, uh, the, 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 the Spring Boot framework and the template for you to build your uh, microservice. Uh, you can, or you can use the DGL serving uh, it's, it's uh, alone as a product to, to deploy uh, the, the, your hosting uh, the model. So yeah, we, we did a, like a lot of testing to make sure the, the stability of our uh, library. Uh, let's talk about the advantage of the DGL. So DGL may be the, the, the easiest the, the library that you can onboard with Java uh, with the, the deep learning. So for the, just for the inference cases, you only need three lines of code. And the DGL is lightweight. So when we building the DGL library, we choose our dependency very, very carefully. So we, we, most of the code we are starting from the scratch. We are not leveraging uh, the, the we, we don't, it's not like other libraries, you're gonna put in the tons of the other uh, dependencies. So we choose the library, the dependencies very, very carefully. And, uh, and the, the total package size is it's, it's, it's minimal. Uh, DGL, it's, it's like super performant uh, because we, do, we avoid the, the IPC call between Java and the Python. So we significantly reduce the, uh, the latencies compared to calling the, the Python code from the Java. And, uh, and the, the, we, the, because we can use the multi-threading, so this maximum the throughput and the, uh, the, 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 the leverage, like we can, we can leverage the multi, multiple cores and the CPUs. So utilize the, fully utilize the, your hardware's uh, computing power. And uh, this is natural because we're in Java, it's very easy to integrate with uh, the, the Kinesis, Flink, Kafka, uh, and with those uh, uh, streaming applications. And I already talked about the stability. We are we, we, we constantly running our benchmark and the testing. Uh, here is our uh, the, the DGL architecture, how we achieve the uh, engine, agnostic, engine agnostic. Uh, so you can see here in the, in the, in the top level, uh, it's our DGLs abstractions. So we provide like a high level, uh, the, the, the classes and the APIs for user to use, uh, including ND array. ND array is the n-dimensional, uh, the, the, the array, uh, the class. And we, we define the model, allow user to use the model class to load the model, save the model, training model, and the sector. And we have a predictor and the trainer. So predictor is used for the prediction and the trainer is used for the training. So, so uh, no matter which engine you use, uh, all this interface will remain the same. So most likely you only interact with the, the, the DGL, like the front end, like the interfaces. Uh, and in the, in, in the between, we have the engine adapter. This is what we build to make sure all the engines behave the same. And we are running like the, the, a lot of like uh, the uh, compatibility tests to make sure that each engine uh, behave the same. So we, 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 we specifically build like uh, the MXNet engine, PyTorch engine, TensorFlow, Onyx, pedal pedal and and hide all the difference from the upper layer so we we we, we build this uh, the the engine adapter layer to guarantee the uh, the compatibility and extendable so and if you have like new engines you want you can just build your engines you new engine it's 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 pretty straightforward and then we have a c and c layer because underneath we want to leverage the uh, uh, the hardware acceleration, like a GPU, TPU, uh, and all kinds of the hardware accelerations. So 
the we use the the, the native engines underneath uh, for for the each different engines. For example, MXNet we're using JNA to communicate the MXNet C API, and uh, and uh, we build our own JNI code directly talk to the PyTorch C++ API, and the TensorFlow we're using Java CPP to communicate with uh, the uh, the the TensorFlow uh, C API, and yeah then uh because of the uh the the, the each engines uh they, they they can leverage the hardware so this is how we build the uh the architect the uh, the the djl uh, uh here is the code that you run the the inference and the run the predictions so you can see here so first one is the first part is uh, we have a criteria class that allow you to search from the model zoo and find the the, the proper models for you. Uh, I can I will, I will talk the the criteria later a, little, a bit, and then uh, you load the model using the criteria. So you you from the model zoo using the criteria you find your model. So uh, the model in 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 deep learning. It's more than just the, the artifact itself. It include normally because it's including the pre-process and the post-process. So for Java user, maybe it's not like a Java user is familiar with the using the object-oriented way. So you're dealing with the uh, the object as the input and the object the output. So we specially designed for this purpose. When you load a model zoom model, it's already like a ready-to-use model. So uh, here. You can see is you load the model. This model take an image object as the input, and return a detected Java ob, uh, the detected the objects, uh, the the class. So this both the image and the detected uh, object is plain Java the object. So once you load the model, you can create a predictor, and uh, and just pass in the uh, the predictor, and the call the predictor dot with the image object. And you can get the uh, the detector object uh, back as a as a result. So from here you can see it's 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 all everything is uh, the Java like your familiar way to doing uh, the code. So we hide the different like uh, the complex the part of the uh, the image processing uh, the post processing uh, stuff in the model zoo. And DGL provide a configuration based uh, the deployment. So DGL uh, created, uh, we created a Spring Boot starter. So if you are a Spring Boot user and using DGL Spring Boot starter, uh, what you need to do is uh, just uh, declare the, the, the uh, a YAML file. So the YAML file, the configuration, uh, we, the auto config YAML file can be uh, uh, the created by your uh, the IntelliJ, for example, IntelliJ have a Spring Boot integration. So once you add the uh, Spring Boot, uh, the the starter DJL starter project into your dependency, uh, you can you can leverage the uh, IntelliJ auto complete. So if you want to deploy a model and run the inference in the Spring Boot. It's as easy as just to just to create the, the config file and uh, using the autocomplete to fill in the what model you want to load. So in here, you can see here is you need to describe uh, what applications you want to, to uh, the, the for your application. Uh, it will show up here. There's object detection, action recognition, image classification, etc. And then you can choose which engine I want to use. I can choose MXNet engine. TensorFlow, PyTorch engine. And same here, you can define the, what the input class I want to use. Uh, it could be a image, it could be a string, right? So, and what output I'm expecting. Uh, once you specify those configurations and you can deploy, you can use our uh, the Spring Boot, to build your project and just to deploy it as a microservice. In the future, if you want to switch the model, right? So you don't need to really change the code. You just change the configuration file and boom, you get a new model, right? So it's very easy to upgrade. Uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the, uh, 
DJL subcations, and I list some of the use cases here. So DJL on Spark, uh, we have a we have we actually have a lot of customers uh, running Spark using DJL, as I mentioned, because the 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 the, the, the integrated with the DJL uh, in the Spark, it, it, it's 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 very very simple. Uh, so the footprint of the DJL is small, so the deployment become the 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 deploying time is. It, it, it's become very short. Our total, uh, the jar file, it depends on the, whether you want to use GPU or CPU. So the, the total, the, 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 the DJL package is less than 100 meg. And uh, we can leverage the uh, native executor to run, run multi-threading tasks on JVM. Uh, and we're building some uh, the extensions allow the Spark user easy to load the models and the, and the data set easily from the, uh, the HDFS or S3 directly. And uh, so uh, Amazon retail team, uh, they, they, uh, they using the DGL to deploy their, their models, they reduce the 70% of the drop time. This is a, this is like a, exceed their expectations. Uh, when you deploy a model, we prepare the different ways, different level of the integrations. Uh, so on AWS, for example, if you have a small model and uh, your latency requirement is uh, not uh, that high, and you are you want the 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 the, the, the reduce the cost. Uh, AWS Lambda is, 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 is the best choice for you. So it's really, really cheap. It's really, really like cost effective. Uh, uh, so DJL so far is the only, because we are, we, are the, 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 we are super lightweight. So we are the only framework that can uh, directly deploy on, the, on, the, on the, uh, the traditional Lambda. So because Lambda have the, the, the total package size limitation and the runtime limitation. So yeah, for those one, so you can use DJL directly load the, the deploy on Lambda and save you a lot of money. And if you have the large model and you can consider the deploy the, on the AWS, uh, the ECS, DJL, you can use uh, the, 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 your own, you create your own service with DJL or you leverage DJL uh, Spring Boot framework uh, to create a microservice easily. And if you have uh, the, 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 the critical, uh, the, 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 if your application is critical on the, uh, the latency and you want to minimize the latency, you can consider using AWS, uh, the, the uh, Elastic, Elastic Beanstalk. So with the, the, with the Elastic Beanstalk, you have a uh, freedom to deploy and create the, whatever the, Web service API, whatever you want, and the, 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 for the users that they don't, they want just the, the hands off and uh, want to have a fully managed service. You can use uh, DGL SageMaker. So DGL, uh, the, we provide the Docker image and we provide the DGL serving, uh, make it easy for you to deploy on the DGL SageMaker, DGL SageMaker. Uh, sorry, Amazon SageMaker. Amazon SageMaker is a full managed service, so uh, yeah, it's you 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 pretty much can uh, the 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 hands free. Uh, and for the Android, so we build the you can see here we build the Android uh, the the demo applications. This demo applications is um, is uh, the uh, the Doodle Draw applications on the Android. Uh, you can draw a, 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 a cartoon, a, a drawing, and during the drawing, so DGL will just to, to classify this, what is what you are drawing and they give a score. So you can see here on, uh, on the Android phone, this is running super smooth. There's no, uh, the, um, uh, there's no laggy at all. So uh, right now the, the edge network, the, the edge devices actually is powerful enough to run a lot of the deep learning framework on uh, the deep learning models on it already. So, yeah. 
and also we build a lot of demos. Uh, we have a repositories. We have uh, tons of the, the, the demo applications to showcase different use cases and applications. And uh, uh, the, we, we, we using Jupyter Notebook create the, uh, the tutorials and the demos for user to learn deep learning with Java. Uh, Jupyter Notebook, uh, it's, it's very, very handy and it's very popular in machine learning world. And uh, it can show the image and show, you can execute the line by line and you can, we can put the, uh, the comments uh, description and, uh, uh, and the tutorial information uh, inside the, the, the same, the, the, same uh, the, the, the line by line, you can read it. So this is a very, very uh, easy to use tools. Uh, probably uh, the, not man, many Java developers familiar with it, but it's very, very easy. And we, we utilize the uh, Java kernel. Originally, Jupyter Notebook is for Python. We, we, we leverage the iJava kernel and build the, the on top of it. So allow Java user to use it easily. You can see this, uh, this Jupyter Notebook is we build and uh, all the code is in Java. Uh, we have a, 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 a set of the tutorials, uh, uh, live Jupyter Notebook uh, in, our, in our repository. And if you go to our uh, documentation website and look at the, the Jupyter Notebook, you can actually find a link. You can run it in uh, in Binder. So if you click on the Binder link, it will bring you to the Binder website and the launch the Jupyter Notebook in there. It's 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 free, and you can try it out. So it's a, it. So basically, we are building a live uh, the 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 code, and you can make changes and run it inside the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, so another thing we do is uh, uh, the, the we build uh, the uh, deep learning machine the deep learning books for you for user to learn machine learnings in Java. So uh, the dive into deep learning book was it is it, a book created by the, the AWS scientist. Uh, it was created in Python, and the, the book itself has been uh, widely adopted by many uh, the college. Uh, and they become the, 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 the college curriculum to teach the deep learnings. Uh, we created a Java version and, the, and the using Java and DJL to, to, to teach the Java. So you can use the, you can learn the deep learning directly in Java. So this book is targeted for the Java developer and all the examples are in Jupyter Notebook and uh, they are all live. And, and all the, the code that you can directly uh, execute it. Uh, so we, 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 the, 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 the deep learning like, uh, is not just uh, 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 a framework, it's more than that. So it requires a lot of the ecosystems. So we build this book to allow Java user to leverage the, uh, the Java power to, to build the, the deep learning. Uh, here's some resources that uh, we the 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 we uh, uh, are talking about here. So we have uh, the uh, Spark batch uh, the the batch inference examples in our DGL the, the examples uh, demo repository, and we have a flink for the real time inference examples, uh, and also like uh, the the streaming services like. Uh, uh, the Kinesis, Beanstalk, EMR, and Lambda examples. Uh, you, you can find all the source code, like Android demos I mentioned earlier. Uh, there's a source code, you can, you can get it. Um, and uh, we have a Spring Boot starter and also have demos to show you how to build the uh, microservices with uh, Spring Boot. So our website is uh, DGL AI. So you can visit our website. You can get the most of the resource from there. And we have a docs website uh, and, uh, and uh, we have a uh, GitHub repositories. There are several repositories. One is DGL main repository and we have a DGL demo repository 
Spring Boot starter repository and the Spring Boot demo repositories. Uh, the online book uh, URL is live. You can you can read the book directly from the uh, URL showing here is d2l.djl.ai. And uh, welcome to join our Slack channel as well. So if you have questions, uh, you can just, uh, uh, yeah, to uh, join our Slack and we will respond from there. Uh, uh, yeah, before Q and A and question, uh, I'd like to maybe we can we can do the final like uh, the the, the Q and A after a stand presentation altogether. together. Uh, one thing I want to uh, the, the the mention is uh, please uh, we are going to post um, a survey and uh, help us to understand the, your need. So the survey is only uh, six questions. It's just a few click. So. Please, uh, the, 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 give us feedback about the, and the, uh, we, we can better understand the, you guys need. Uh, uh, thank you guys. So I will hand off to uh, Stan and we can do a Q and A after Stan, uh, pr the presentation. Hey folks, can you hear me and see my screen? Yep, sounds good, looks good. Awesome. Um, so, um, hello everyone. Hello people who joined recently. I saw that um, there was an increase in participants in the Zoom meeting. Um, my name is Stan and I work for Netflix. I work in Netflix observability engineering team. And it's a team that's responsible for uh, ingesting metrics, logs, events. And also it is a team that's responsible for alerting anomaly detection, uh, root cause analysis, um, all kinds of interesting things. And um, we are tier zero team, meaning we cannot really onboard any circular, circular dependencies because if Netflix goes down, our alerting and anomaly detection infrastructure still needs to be up so we can actually investigate why we cannot stream videos, which is rare. It happens very, very rarely. Um, and uh, we are a small team and we are mostly JVM. We use Scala quite extensively for almost everything. Uh, but we have also Java projects, and um, we turn to DJL framework for some of the applied machine learning use cases, and also use cases of inference at scale. Um, as I mentioned, we are working with MELT data, which is metrics, events, logs, and traces. Um, we have built an open source Atlas time series database that is kind of battle tested and used extensively at Netflix for metric ingestion. I believe uh, we ingest billions and billions of metrics a second. Uh, we also provide logging, exploration, and alerting in infrastructure. So we ingest logs, we're allowed to visualize them, we're allowed to um, um, you can alert on certain log patterns and uh, we use machine learning in log processing. We also do traces and this is where also a lot of root cause analysis kind of work happens. And we um, build our own traces engines and we build our own storage solution for trace data. Um, and it really helps to, to navigate playback at Netflix and uh, streaming quality at Netflix and like trace all the requests from uh, someone turning on their TV to start streaming to kind of pausing something. Uh, our main technology stack is um, ACTA framework. We use it to process streams of data that come in from Kinesis that could also come in from Kafka and we are Quite, we're probably the heaviest users of Mantis open source projects that uh, Netflix created and maintaining right now. And it's, uh, it's a stream processing 
framework for with a focus on observability data. Um, and I'm mentioning all of this to create this kind of picture and atmosphere that we are um, in the business of high scale processing. We also cannot go down and we can only rely on libraries that are stable, uh, well tested and resilient. Um, we, can, we also need to rely on libraries in JVM that are extremely performant and that are um, um, scalable as well. And happily, I can say that DJL proved to be one of those libraries. Um, I already mentioned that our focus. Uh, let me jump into how do we use DJL. Right now, mainly we use it to um, um, deploy in production at age pre-trained models. And we train models in offline manner. For example, we use Python to train models. We use a best network, a best deep learning engine for a particular use case for a particular um, modeling task. And then we uh, save that model in a, either in a native format or with a little bit of conversion, we save it in a format that DJL understands and accepts. And we deploy the model um, to our microservices so we can use it very close to the data. We can use it at the ingestion layers where the data gets um, just appears in our on our radar. Uh, we can use scale up, we can scale our microservices to process more data and we can scale it also them to uh, apply machine learning um, on more data. What are the best parts about DJL from production use case is um, the fact that it's engine agnostic is really important. For example, I use I, and deploy models from PyTorch, TensorFlow, or NNX. Uh, um, uh, I have some work in progress with TensorFlow light models, and I can just really reuse the same mental model and Java infrastructure to load the models from those different engines and treat them the same way and even reuse code. I had a use case when I had a TensorFlow model, it didn't really work out for my case. And I just swapped it with a PyTorch model and it was working, working flawlessly with very little adjustment needed on my side. Um, we also uh, don't do almost none offline processing. All our processing is real time, which means we have all the data coming in and all the data needs to be processed immediately. So we need, we applying DJL in real time streaming use cases in real time um, anomaly detection use cases and log clustering use cases. When when data comes in, we, we don't wait a day to you know let's do some batch processing on it later on to see what we can do. No, it's all real time, and it really helps that we can have this lightweight uh, framework deploy it uh, on a regular EC2 instance or a, or a Docker container and uh, have a micro Java microservice that has nothing to do with machine learning, actually do some machine learning and leave some resources for all the other processing as well. Um, the performance is superb. Um, it is actually faster when, when I use, for example, the DJL and TensorFlow or DJL and PyTorch, uh, the inference performance is often faster than I uh, observe in Python. Um, memory management is a lot easier. Um, I use extensively multi-threaded inference. So uh, for example, on a machine with 32 or 64 CPUs, I can easily create uh, uh, the same amount of DJL predictors and each of them can do some independent work. Um, support for pre-trained models is amazing because you can just download something from TensorFlow Hub or from PyTorch models or MXNet models or, or for example, from uh, uh, Transformers uh, Python project, and you can quickly load it into DJL, um, write a few Java classes to massage your data for the input and process the output and you can try out a model 
and measure its performance and see how can you use it in, uh, in JVM. It, uh, DJL has great Slack community, so you can join Slack and ask questions. This is how I got started. Um, I'm, um, as I mentioned in the beginning of the talk, um, I'm a sort of a polyglot engineer and I worked in several different languages. So um, um, switching between languages comes with this kind of price of context switch. And when I switched to Java and I needed to do something in Scala, I really appreciated the help I got from DJL and Slack that uh, some folks just um, created examples for me like, hey, if you want to do this, this and that, here's an example, you can copy paste it and run it and it's gonna work. And it really bootstrap my learning curve with DJL. Uh, DJL at Netflix is tested in prod. As we speak right now, we have a service that process most of the logs at Netflix in real time. It, uh, DJL allows us to apply machine learning for real time log clustering on each log line in sub millisecond, which is great. Um, and um, it's processing from one to 15 gigabytes of, sec of logs a second, which sometimes ter turns into petabytes of logs a day. Um, here's a small example of why do we need to process logs. I thought that it might be interesting to actually share a particular business case. Um, you can see that we grabbing all the logs from thousands of microservices at Netflix and um, each log line might be a little bit different from another one when it comes to certain parameters in that log line or instance IDs or unique IDs and um, DJL um, and uh, some natural language processing, deep learning allows us to analyze it and cluster it super accurately. So we can actually count all the logs, individual log lines without any sampling. And we can um, alert on any material increase or, um, or any sort of increase and observe those uh, time series of clusters in the logs um, a lot easier. We used to not have machine learning in the space and it was really, really hard to achieve what we were able to achieve with DJL. Um, and the future plans is GPU inference and real-time anomaly detection on streams of data in Mantis. So we haven't used DJL in Mantis yet. Um, I'm also working on some benchmarking and measurements of um, production use cases, like how long it takes to do this. And, on an instance of this type in AWS or in um, or on in EC2 instance or in a Docker container, and I'm also planning to open source some DJL powered tools that would have a it would be a Java library with a DJL dependency that will do some uh, common things um, in the observability space, such as log processing, log clustering, uh, and some other stuff. Um, DJLs, DJL and GPUs work great. I have tried it. Uh, we don't use GPUs in production, but I just wanted to share a fun fact. Um, NVIDIA Tesla T4 uh, GPU that comes on G4DN instance in AWS actually only takes 70 watts of power at peak. And I believe it takes about, uses about 40 watts of power um, in um, uh, when it's in idle mode. And it really speeds up the inference, especially if you have deep, deep uh, models with a lot of layers and a lot of parameters. Um, I use NVIDIA Tesla T4s outside of um, the space that I was just talking about. And um, it is a great speed up for inference use cases, especially when you deal with complicated models. So. This is what I, what I want to see maybe a little later that we move some of the CPU processing uh, that we do now with DJL to GPUs. Even one GPU can create um, a big performance boost. Um, here in slides, I'm probably going to share slides with the group a little later, but um, we have an article on AWS, um, how DJL is being used at Netflix with more details and also um, I have a Scala and Akka DJL example. So if you're into stream processing using Akka framework, um, you might find it useful. 
And that's it. I think we can jump into QA. Uh, okay. Uh, am I on? You're on, yep. Okay. Uh, so I see the questions about uh, how we le how we communicate with uh, utilize the GPU and how to communicate C++. Purpose. So basically is uh, we are, uh, we, we write, we are using JNA or JNI or Java CPP to communicate the, the, the frameworks uh, C APIs. Those framework have uh, GPU uh, native support already. So uh, we can leverage the, uh, the, 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 the each uh, engine's uh, cap the, the, the computing uh, capabilities to uh, running the, the inference on the GPU. Uh, and another question is uh, TensorFlow Java and the PyTorch already exist and how we compared with them. So uh, for the, let, let's talk about the, the PyTorch Java first. Uh, the PyTorch Java, it's uh, inference only today. It doesn't support training. And we support a full training. So we are a full framework. You can do almost everything. And, uh, and also uh, uh, beyond that, uh, so because we build the JNA, we, we expose uh, the many uh, low level uh, uh, PyTorch functionalities uh, through like generic Java API, you can write uh, engine specific code in a generic way without uh, engine dependencies. Uh, you, so basically is you don't, you don't have a uh, compile time dependencies on the framework, but if you choose to type your functionalities with the engine specific one, you can still do it. So we are we build the, the uh, abstract layer, but we are not limiting, uh, we are not limiting you, uh, not preventing you to use uh, the uh, engine's low level functionalities. Uh, the second is the uh, current PyTorch Java API. It's uh, only provided uh, the, uh, the inference. So means they can only do uh, the, 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 the binary, like a tensor in, tensor out inference. They don't have a capability to do the, uh, the, the uh, object processing. For example, how to convert an image into a tensor. This requires the sum of the ND array operations and uh, you don't have it. If you want to purely do it in the Java, the result may be different from the, uh, the, 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 the originally trained, the, the, the processing way. For example, when you do the, uh, the, the transpose or kind of the, the, uh, the image, uh, the, the processing, the result might be different. We see a lot of this kind of things happen before. So if you are using Java to process them, the, the prediction result may not uh, the accurate as the original model train. Uh, DGL provide the, all the NDRA operations and leverage the, the, uh, the, 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 the native code, the engine way to do the processing. So if you are using uh, DGL to, to inference a uh, PyTorch model, you can do uh, all the pre-processing, post-processing, and theory manipulations uh, with the, 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 the with with ease of code. Yeah, they're very easy to, to do that. But yeah, but if you want to use the uh, the uh, the PyTorch Java and you have to do this kind of things and dimensional array uh, the 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 calculation operation in Java. Uh, yeah, and we 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 we. We have the, for example, the TF Java, no, sorry, PyTorch Java was designed for the, uh, the, the Android device, uh, but they don't really have a, like the, 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 the easy uh, the integrate the, 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 the package that distribute. And we published all the binaries, all the, all the, 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 the Android version of the uh, uh, PyTorch libraries in AR format, you can easily integrate with it. Uh, for the TensorFlow, I would like uh, the TensorFlow Java. Yes, we do use TensorFlow Java uh, underneath, but the way we are using is we only use the low-level API and we we create our own abstraction and high-level APIs for user. So make it easy to use. So for example, you can see here, uh, when you're loading the model with DJL, you can easily just using model zoo and load model directly from the TF hub. So, we not only the, the, the handling the model loading and the inference part, we also handling the deep downloading, packaging and the, and the caching, all kind of stuff for you. Uh, and another thing is uh, the, 
the memory management. We have a special memory, man, like special uh, the 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 memory management because the uh, the the all the the models are loaded in the native uh, C code. They are off heap, so normally uh, the Java can, the, the GC cannot see them. So uh, it's it's going to be a like it, it it was a big problem in for the many of the other frameworks using Java. Uh, including the, the 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 PyTorch Java and the the, the TensorFlow, TensorFlow Java, so uh, so the offheap memory management is uh, the is something like we created and managed here. So we release the memory as soon as possible. So uh, we we have a ND manager uh, the 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 design pattern to uh, to the to release the native memory uh, as soon as the uh, you finish the using it and uh, without writing a lot of like a try catch code in your in your in, in your java code uh, so this is something like uh, the uh, uh, unique uh, compared to to the tf java uh, and we did a lot of things to reduce the gc we are, and we are keeping working on it and uh, make sure that the the make the gc eff the efficiency and the reduce the GC impact in the JVM. And another one is uh, compared to uh, the, 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 the Trivial. Uh, Trivial is the Oracle open source for, they are focusing on the machine learning. And, uh, and, um, and we actually is uh, focusing on the uh, deep learning and, uh, but we can also run many of the uh, machine learning models like, uh, uh, the way we are achieving it is go through the uh, Onyx runtime. For example, uh, you can convert your secular model and XGPU model into the, uh, the PyTorch or using the Onyx runtime, then using DGL to load it. This is how DGL currently support the, uh, the machine learning models. Uh, Trivial is a collection. They, they, the, the majority of the models is, is using it for the um, uh, for the machine learning, like XGBoost, uh, the 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 uh, SDM, uh, the support vector machine models, uh, the yeah, uh, yeah. So we have a different focus. Looks like we're getting to the end of the queue here, Frank. That's yeah. great, though. A lot of uh, and and Stanislav, a lot of a lot of interaction. This is awesome.